So we're just gonna skip the conversation about me coming back to YouTube, and all I'm gonna say is that I'm gonna be putting out one new video every week on Fridays, and that's how it's gonna be. Um, I've made a few resolutions, if you will, for 2021, and this is one of them, because I thoroughly enjoy making these videos, and I'm super bummed that I stopped doing it. So I'm gonna do it once a week, every Friday, a new video. So let's just get into this one, and then there's gonna be a video every week. We're gonna start out small with the one video a week because I know I can stay consistent with that and continue to put out videos every week. And if I try and start too strong again, with two, three, four videos a week, I'm gonna get overwhelmed and fall off again. And we don't want that. So one video a week, let's get on with it. I'm gonna try to avoid making a super heavy talking video, but if anybody's new here or coming back to my videos from previously, um, I do still have my Subaru. This is what it looks like now, kind of similar to the last video I made giving a, an update on it when it was burgundy. Um, there are some changes from that video. Obviously it's not burgundy anymore. I did get majority of the car repainted um, back to its original midnight blue color. So that is how it sits right now. I had to go back to paint because I was beyond annoyed with wrap. Wrap is amazing in the sense that it's cheap and it's fairly easy to do. I wrapped the car four, three, three or four times myself. And uh, it really wasn't that bad. By no means am I a professional at it and it was not professional quality, but it changed the color of the car and it was good from far, but far from good. So I'm sure if I had paid someone to wrap the car professionally, I would feel different about it because honestly, sometimes it does look like paint. Um, but I just, I wanted it back to its original color and I'm stoked on the way it looks right now. It's a little bit jank looking right now because it doesn't have the side skirts on. It's also missing these side vents in the front bumper. If you guys watched that walk around video of the car when it was burgundy, I do have these carbon side vents for the front there. Um, but I hit a very aggressive pothole last summer and one of them pieced out, so now I only have one. But anyways, don't really want to talk about the Subaru right now. That's not what this video is kind of focused on. I did buy another car to build up as a drift car and you guys have already seen it in the title and in the thumbnail, so I'll just show you guys. This is my new 89 S13. Um, this car was not, it was not easy to find. Um, I've been looking for a clean S chassis shell for quite a while, basically since I had that E30 that I made videos about last winter. And uh, eventually, originally that E30 was gonna be a drift build for me. Um, it was supposed to get an LQ4 V8 and I was gonna learn in that, but I think I really underestimated the amount of work that that car needed to become what I wanted it to be. Um, and by no means is this a turnkey drift car, as you guys will see in a moment. But honestly, this is a, a build that I've always wanted to do, and I probably would have done regardless of keeping that E30 or not. This car is very clean. I was lucky to find a clean S13, and I can see the value in building this one into what I want it to be. So yeah, let's, uh, let's take a look at why this thing is not a turnkey drift car at all. <laughs> So I did buy the car with no engine at all. It came exactly, basically how it sits right now. And I was totally fine with that because of the plans that I do have for it. Um, this is this is kind of the best part and where it becomes the build that I've always wanted to do. And that is because of this. This is a 1JZ VVTi that I got a couple weeks after I picked up the car. Um, this is out of a JZX 110. It does seem to be a pretty clean motor. Um, I haven't noticed any issues with it just visually so far. Obviously, I haven't torn it apart much. Um, it did come from a pretty reputable uh, JDM importer local to me. Um, well, not directly from them, but someone bought it from them and a few weeks later sold it. Um, just changed his mind about his swap. So I bought it from him, but I did talk to the importers and confirm that it came from them. They confirmed some compression numbers, and yeah, it looks to be a solid motor, and it's exactly what I wanted for this build, and that's why I was totally fine with buying this without an engine. This car is very bare. Um, it literally has basically nothing on the inside. Uh, there is majority of the interior in the back there, and these hilarious speakers that, I don't know if these are stock or someone put them in, but pretty funny. Anyways, um, yeah, as you can see, there's really, not much going on here. It does have a pretty mint dash. No cracks in the dash, which is crazy. Uh, it has this Cusco bolting cage that is rad and I'm stoked on because the car was definitely gonna get a cage anyway. 
Um, basically the story behind the car is the guy that I bought it from, he was planning to put an LS in it and he never really got around to doing it. Um, he stripped the car, put the cage in, I believe, and then he did have some aero for it, like the rear bumper is there, uh, the side skirts are fairly aggressive right there. Um, but he had this whole build mapped out for it uh, to do an LS and he just never ended up doing it and parted everything out. And I got the car in this state. Uh, it came with no fenders, it did come with that red hood. Uh, I managed to pick up these wide fenders from a friend for a pretty good deal. Uh, they just need a little bit of massaging to fit correctly, so he hooked me up pretty good on them. Um, but I'm fine with that. I want to do a kind of ground up build, uh, similar to what I did with the Subaru. Obviously, it wasn't like this, but I did buy the car basically stock, and I've had an unreal time building it to the point it's at now. Um, so yeah, I'm stoked. It's gonna be good. It did come uh, with coils and it came with all adjustable arms already. Um, that was some stuff he did leave on it for me, which I was happy about. This chassis does actually only have 68,000 original K on it. Um, and that kinda explains why the car is so clean. Honestly, there's next to no rust anywhere on this thing. There is this very minor spot right here on the strut tower where there's a little bit of rust starting to form. Um, I will go through, get that cleaned up, and make sure that it doesn't continue to rest. But in terms of the frame rails, I'll try and show you guys here. So you can see there, the frame rail is honestly very mint, and it's the exact same on the other side too. Overall, I'm super happy on the condition of this thing for the build that I want to do with it. Um, it did come with these wide fenders on it, but underneath the actual fender isn't cut, which is sweet. There is obviously rivets already in the fender. Um, but if I did want to go back to stock body in the rear, it's simply just filling these holes and getting it resprayed, uh, which isn't a big deal because it'll probably get resprayed or dare I say wrapped at some point anyway. But this is the, the main highlight for me. I am so stoked that I got my hands on a Jay-Z and we'll be throwing it in this thing. I do have basically the whole build kind of mapped out. Uh, I'll actually show you guys what else I have for it here. Okay, so in the back of the Subaru here, I have some of the parts that are going along with the Jay-Z and the S13. Uh, I will be doing a CD09 Trans in it. Um, so what I have here is I have the Collins adapter, and then I also have the Stage 5 Twin Disc Clutch from Collins um, that'll be going along with it. So yeah, that's just some of the stuff that I've kind of stockpiled over the last little bit uh, to get everything sorted for this thing. I did pull my Bride uh, Vertex seat out of the Subaru as well. Um, I'll probably throw that in the S13. I quite enjoyed having my stock seat back in the Subaru because it's heated and it was just nice to have. So I'll probably throw the Vertex seat in the S13 and just hope that it doesn't get ruined. My plan is to have the S13 running by beginning of March, ideally, so things are gonna start to pick up pretty quick here and that's kind of why I wanted to make this first video now. Um, yeah, I'm just stockpiling parts right now because not a lot can really go in mechanically until I basically have it all. Um, I do have a diff sorted out and a drive shaft. Um, in terms of the CD mating to the Jay-Z, I'm uh, just waiting on my crankshaft adapter and new pilot bushing. Those two things are on the way already from a friend I have over at Fish Racing Tech. The Jay-Z supposedly has around 90,000 K on it. Um, it is a drive-by-wire, not drive-by-cable Jay-Z. Um, I've had kind of mixed, heard mixed reviews about drive-by-wire, drive-by-cable. Um, I've talked to a few people that have drive-by-wire and they say there really is no delay in terms of throttle response or they haven't like noticed anything drastic. Uh, so I'm not too worried about it. I know a lot of Jay-Z swap people are like, no, you need drive-by-cable. Um, but I'm not too concerned about it. That's where I'm gonna kind of leave the S13 content for now. We're gonna skip to tomorrow. Uh, working on another new car that I got that you guys haven't seen yet. Um, there's some maintenance stuff that I gotta do on that car, so you guys will see that tomorrow. So it's the next morning now, and I just got to work. We are in my 99 VR6 that I got fairly recently. Um, there's a bit of a story behind this car, but uh, basically now what I use it for is just to save a bit of money on driving the truck, so I drive this to work sometimes. Um, but it's been having some issues lately. Well, actually, since I bought it. This is my temp gauge right here, and I just drove probably about half an hour 
to work and that's about as hot as it ever gets. If I leave it idling, it might get a little bit hotter, um, but not normally. So my thoughts is that the thermostat is stuck. I did get a new thermostat and I also got spark plugs for it because it's heavily misfiring right now. I don't know if plugs is the issue, but they definitely need to be done considering the mileage and the previous owner didn't seem like the type that he was on top of that kind of maintenance. So. Yeah, so I'm gonna stay late uh, after work and get those things done and hopefully fix those issues. So this is what she looks like. She's, she's definitely no show car, but for a 99, uh, like there's minimal rust on it. Yeah, not in, not in bad shape. It's a good little daily driver. It's fun, it's manual. It makes putting the Subaru in the win away in the winter easier. But, uh, yeah. Okay, so I just pulled out the thermostat housing and the thermostat lies in here. So I'm just gonna swap it now and then hopefully it'll be good. I already did the spark plugs because it's super easy. You literally just pull out the spark plug wires and the spark plug is right there. And it's honestly the quickest I've ever done spark plugs. So yeah, we're gonna swap this out and hopefully it'll be good. Now right, you're doing great, keep going. I'm tired, man. <laughs> keep going for this way. Okay, new thermostat is in the housing. Now time to put all of this back together. Isaac's over here smacking the shit out of his 4Runner trying to fit his 35s. Fancy boy wheels. Okay, so I think I was supposed to actually get a legit rubber gasket for this housing. Um, you can see on the block right there. I just scraped off the old gasket, but I'm just gonna use some like old pen gasket maker and it should be fine. If it's not, I'll just pull it off and put a real gasket on. Just trying to get some air out of the system right now. Uh, I don't have a fitting to bleed it with uh, the jug connected to the top of the reservoir, so I just filled it up and I'm bleeding it this way. Uh, yeah, it appears to be running okay. It still kind of sounds like it's missing. Um, I kind of figured it wouldn't run perfect just after doing plugs, but it definitely needed them anyway. All right, so I just brought it out of the shop and honestly, I think it's, it's all good now in terms of the coolant issue. Um, it bled for a little while there, and it took a little bit to get up to temp, but now for the first time, it's actually uh, actually running at proper temp. Well, I'm currently going 100 on the highway, and if I had done this before with the old thermostat, the temp gauge would basically be down at fully cold right now. And the heat still worked, but the temp gauge would be down at fully cold. It was, it was weird, but yeah, now we're holding 90 degrees just right on the dot and it's not fluctuating at all. I don't even think it needs to bleed anymore. So that's sick, I'm stoked. Uh, the spark plugs didn't help too much with the uh, misfires, but I'll look into that a little more. Um, it's definitely a little bit healthier, but not quite where it needs to be. Well, I think that's where I'm gonna end this video. I hope you guys are stoked on the S13 and we'll probably do a little bit more stuff with that Golf every once in a while. Um, just maintenance stuff for the most part. I just wanna keep it running healthy and keep it as a good daily and uh, yeah we'll probably do some stuff with the truck as well I think on Sunday I'm gonna take the truck out and go wheeling with some friends so that'll be in next week's video uh, but yeah and then the Subaru I still got to bring back to life as well there's some interior stuff that I need to do but uh, the main focus is definitely gonna be this thing um, try and get as much done on it as I can that's where I'm gonna leave it for this one uh, if you enjoyed the video drop a like so I know and uh, yeah I'll see you guys in the next video peace